Hey you guys, this is Mr. Millings and today we're going to learn all about nuclear equations. So don't be scared people, it's just some nuclear chemistry going on. So what are nuclear equations and how do they work? Well it says right here that using nuclear symbols or isotope notation, nuclear equations show how the nucleus of an, uh, a radioactive isotope break down uh, or breaks down over time into isotopes containing less mass along with different radioactive particles associated with the isotopes decay. So what the heck does all this mean? Well, we talked about radioactivity in an earlier video, and we talked about how with radioactive isotopes, the nucleus of those atoms are going to lose some of their mass to energy over time, right? And so what a nuclear equation does is it shows us how the nucleus of that radioactive isotope is going to break down over time. For example, if we take a look at this uh, nuclear equation here, we have some sort of radioactive isotope of plutonium, right? And the mass number of a chemical, I'm sorry, of a, uh, of a nuclear symbol is always in the top left corner, and the atomic number is always in the bottom right corner. And so what this nuclear equation is telling us is that this radioactive isotope is going to decay. It's going to break down. And what is it going to break down and produce? Well, let's take a look on the right-hand side of this arrow. It looks like it's going to produce this particle right here. And in an earlier video, we talked about uh, what this particle is. This is a helium nucleus, or basically an alpha particle, as well as this lighter isotope of uranium. Okay, so this nuclear equation shows us that this radioactive isotope of plutonium is going to break down to produce this isotope of uranium as well as a little uh, alpha particle. Okay, so if we take a look closely at nuclear equations, what we can see is that this little arrow here of a nuclear equation basically separates the nuclear equation into two halves, the left-hand side and the right-hand side. And so the law of conservation of mass and energy tells us that what we start with, we must end with. So how does that apply to this nuclear equation here? Well, if we take a look at the mass number of the radioactive isotope that we're starting with, it's 242. That's the mass number of this radioactive isotope. And if we take a look on the right-hand side, we have 238 for the mass number of this uranium isotope, and we've got a mass number of 4 for this alpha particle right here and if we add these two mass numbers together we're going to get 242 so the mass numbers on both sides of this nuclear equation must equal each other according to the law of conservation of mass and energy also if we take a look at the bottom of our nuclear equation we're going to see uh, I'm sorry if we take a look at the bottom of our nuclear symbol here we're going to see this number right here. This is the atomic number, and you guessed it. The atomic numbers on both sides of this arrow must add up to the same thing. So we have 94 for an atomic number on the left-hand side of this arrow. And take a look. We have 2 here plus 92 here, and that's going to add up to 94 as well. All right, so in a nuclear equation, we need to make sure that the mass numbers on both sides of this little arrow equal each other and we need to make sure that the atomic numbers on both sides of this little arrow equal each other as well. Alright, so that's a nuclear equation. Let's take a look at a few examples where we, where we learn how to fill in the blank spots in a nuclear equation. Alright, so let's go ahead and take a look at this very first example here. It looks like what we need to do is we need to complete the nuclear equations. So in this first example here, we have a radioactive isotope of oxygen. And what's going to end up happening is this radioactive isotope of oxygen is going to decay. It's going to break down. Its nucleus is going to decay. And it's going to produce this new isotope of nitrogen. And we need to figure out what is going to be left over. What else is being produced? Okay, so what particle is going to be produced over here. So how do we do this? Well, if we take a look, the mass number on the left-hand side of the arrow adds up to 15. Well, if we take a look on the right-hand side, the mass number right here is 15. So what must the mass number be over here? Uh, 15 plus what number, in other words, is going to equal 15? Well, that's going to be a zero, right? So the mass number of this new particle that is going to be emitted from the nucleus has a mass number of zero. 15 plus 0 is 15 on the right, and we have 15 on the left, right? So let's take a look further. If we take a look, the atomic number of our radioactive isotope that we're starting with is 8. Well, on the left-hand side, we have an atomic number of 8. And so 7 plus what number will give us 8? Well, 
that's going to be a one, right? That's going to be a one. So now what you can do is you can pause this video and you can go back to the video where we learned about radioactive particles and different types of radioactive decay and you can see what particle is going to have a mass number of zero and an atomic number of one and it looks like that's going to be a beta particle a beta particle right and we can write a beta particle like this or we can even write it like this right here where this is the Greek letter of the alphabet beta and in fact this is actually going to be a positron a positron rather than a uh, which is one type of beta particle, I suppose. So if we take a look, 15 plus 0 is 15 on the right, 15 on the left. We have 7 plus 1 is 8 on the right, and we have 8 on the left. And so it looks like this radioactive isotope of oxygen is going to break down and produce this new isotope of nitrogen, and also what's going to be produced or emitted from that nucleus over here is going to be a positron which is similar to an electron with a positive charge, right? So there we go. Let's take a look at this one. It looks like we don't know what the radioactive isotope is, but we do know what's, what it is producing, right? It's going to end up breaking down, and it's going to produce this isotope of sulfur, and it looks like it's going to produce this particle right here. What is this particle right here? This is a beta particle which essentially is, is very similar to an electron. Okay, so we have to figure out what this is going to be over here. So let's go ahead and do that. We have 32 plus 0, which gives us 32 for the mass number. So the mass number on the left must be 32. Let's take a look. 16 plus a negative 1, so 16 minus 1, is going to give us 15. 15 on the right, 15 on the left. And so now what we can do is we can turn to our periodic table of elements and see what element has atomic number 15. And if you pull out your periodic table of elements, if you pause this video and go grab that periodic table of elements, you'll see number 15 on the periodic table is phosphorus. So it looks like this radioactive isotope of phosphorus, its nucleus is going to break down over time and it's going to produce this lighter uh, well, it should be slightly lighter isotope of sulfur, and it's going to emit this little beta particle as well from its nucleus. Let's take a look at this next example here. We need to figure out what is going to be produced, what is going to be filled into this missing spot right here. So it looks like what's happening is we have this, this hy hydrogen isotope right here. Uh, with this hydrogen isotope right here, these guys are going to smash into each other. It looks like a neutron is going to be produced. And what other, what other new isotope is going to be produced? Well, let's take a look. It looks like 2 plus 3 is 5 on the left-hand side. So 1 plus what number is going to be 5? Well, that's going to be 4, right? 4 plus 1 is 5. 2 plus 3 is 5. The mass numbers on both sides of that arrow now equal each other. All right, let's take a look further. We have 1 plus 1 is 2. So what number plus 0 will give us 2? That's going to be 2, right? So we have 2 on the right for the atomic number now, 2 on the left for the atomic number now. And so what element or what atom is number 2 on the periodic table? Well, that looks like it's going to be helium, right? So smash these two together, and you're going to end up with a neutron and this little substance or particle right here, a little helium uh, atom right here going on which could also be a uh, an alpha particle as well like we talked about in an earlier video let's take a look at a couple more examples all right let's take a look at this example right here we have this isotope of californium and we want to know what it's going to have to smash into to produce these three neutrons as well as this isotope of lawrencium so how do we do this well let's figure this out we have three neutrons so three times one is three and 3 plus 259 is 262 for a mass number at the top of the, uh, or on the right side of this nuclear equation. And so we already have 252 on the left hand side. So if 252 plus what number is going to give us 262? Well, that's going to be 10, right? So the mass number of this new little uh, particle that we're trying to figure out. Uh, is going to be 10 and now let's take a look 3 times 0 is 0 and 0 plus 103 is 103 for the total of the atomic numbers on the right hand side of this arrow so 98 plus what number is going to give us 103 that's going to be 5 
98 plus 5 is 103. We have 103 for the atomic numbers on the right. And so what atom has an atomic number of 5 on the periodic table? We'll take a look at your periodic table, and that's going to be boron. So if you take a californium atom and smash it together with a boron atom, here's what in the, or here is what ends up being produced. Three neutrons and then this isotope of lawrencium. Let's take a look at this example here. So right here we've got uh, this isotope of iridium. It's going to, uh, it's radioactive so its nucleus is going to decay and produce this uh, isotope of platinum right here. It looks like it's going to produce this little beta particle right here and we have to figure out what else. So let's go ahead and do that. 192 on the left hand side for the mass number here. Well, 192 plus 0 is 192. And so what must the mass number of this missing little particle be? It also must be 0, right? 192 plus 0 plus 0 is 192 for the mass numbers on the right. We have 192 for the mass number on the left. Let's continue working here. It looks like we have 77 for the atomic number on the left. 78 minus 1 is already 77. Right, so 77 plus what number will end us up with 77? That's going to be 0. 78 plus 0 is 78, minus 1 is 77. So we have 77 for the atomic numbers here, which is equal to the 77 for the atomic number here. And so if we look at the, uh, the symbols of the different particles in an earlier video that we talked about, we learn that this is going to be a gamma ray, right? This is going to be a gamma ray. So iridium nucleus of a, uh, I'm sorry, a radioactive isotope of iridium is going to break down, it's going to produce this isotope of platinum, it's going to release a gamma ray it looks like, and it's also going to release this little beta particle right here. All right, last one, let's take a look. We have this uh, radioactive isotope of silver, and it looks like it's going to, uh, its nucleus is going to break down and it's going to produce this new isotope of cadmium, and we have to figure out what other substance or particle is going to be produced. So go ahead and pause this video and try this one on your own before I go ahead and work this out for you. Let's take a look. So we have 115 on the left for a mass number. We already have 115 on the right, so this mass number of this particle must be 0. 115 plus 0 is 115 on the right, 115 on the left. We have 47 for an atomic number here. Well, we already have 48 here. So 48 minus what number is going to give us 47? You guessed it. That'll be a negative 1. Okay, this will be a negative 1. And so what particle, what radioactive particle has a mass number of 0 and an atomic number of negative 1? That's going to be a beta particle, right? And we can write this like this. Or if you wanted to, you can even write this uh, a beta particle like this right here either one of those is acceptable just make sure this isn't a B make sure it looks like the Greek letter of the alphabet beta alright so those are nuclear equations in a nutshell and that's how you can complete these nuclear equations if you like what you see go ahead and click that little bomb in the bottom right hand corner and that will subscribe you to my channel and if you have any questions or comments feel free to leave them in the section down below here and I hope you guys found this helpful